Howdy folks, this is the Dynam Hawksky V2 uh, and it was sent to me by Gearbest.com for this review and there are purchase links in the description for the uh, ARF version which you need to add your own uh, receiver battery and transmitter or the ready to fly version which comes with transmitter battery uh, everything you need starting from scratch. Let's have a look at it. Now here's a quick view of what comes in the box um, and I can tell just by looking at it straight away it's really nice quality, really really smooth and good quality foam. The wings are beautiful, really nice sturdy wing spar, um, even comes with a little um, canopy and pilot which is unusual, landing gear, decals, uh, pretty good instruction manual, a spare prop. That's impressive. Doesn't come with glue, I don't think, but that's okay. Glue's easy to find. Now there are some really nice touches. Uh, and you can see the wing has retaining clips, uh, which will little little push and lift clip that stops it from sliding out. That's a great idea. Uh, you won't find that on a lot of other planes. The control horns are very substantial. Uh, and I am very happy with these control horns. They're big enough to spread the load wide enough not to uh, push through the foam. And they even have reinforcing on the sides of this control horn here to, to uh, strengthen the actual body of the control horn itself. So that is another very impressive addition. Good quality. I really like this style of aeroplane. Um, it's very much like the Bixlers or the AXN or Clouds Fly type uh, layout. Uh, and they all fly really, really nicely. This one's closer to a Bixler 1, I suppose, a little bit smaller than the Bixler 2 that I have. Uh, and I just know that it's going to be an easy to fly, uh, pleasant plane, and it'll make a great slope soarer as well. Now, there aren't an enormous amount of instructions. This block of photos is pretty much all you get, but that's plenty to uh, help you put it together. It's a very, very simple assembly anyway. First step is to glue on the horizontal and vertical stabilizers uh, so I'm just heating up my hot glue gun and I'll just slot them in. That should be enough. And just slot it into place. Slide it right forward and push it down. Now it's test fit the vertical stabiliser. That looks lovely. Now I just want to make sure I don't gum up the push rod. Wipe off the excess. Cool, that is done. And I think that's all the gluing we have to do. Oh, maybe the pilot as well. Now it's time to attach the control horns. And I realise now that it would have been easier to do this before I glued the uh, rudder and elevator on. But you live and learn. So that's just two little bolts going through to a backing plate. Very easy. Just don't over tighten it so you squash the foam too much. And then connect the push rod. And this is the elevator push rod. And it has a little um, linkage adjuster connection so that's just bolting through to the backing plate and then you tighten up the screw on the push rod on the linkage adjuster the ESC came with a Dean's connector so I had to cut that off and put uh, the XT60 connector which all my batteries fit and this is the spinner for the prop and it had that little tang sitting out which stopped it fitting together so I just broke that off I don't really know why that's there but fitted perfectly once that was gone. Then the spinner fits on the shaft and engages with the little nut there. Prop goes on, facing forward. Washer, another lock nut, which you tighten up nice and tight so the prop doesn't come off. And then the uh, spinner cover goes on just held in place by a couple of little screws. 
landing gear fits into that little slot then is a little piece of plastic that goes in afterwards and fills up the slot then it's all held in with a little uh, couple of little screws that overlap the uh, plastic insert and the same with the tail wheel that's just held into its slot by a couple of little screws now fitting the wings and I'm um, putting the uh, wing spar in that fits nice and tight then there's a little wire lead provided for ailerons and I'll start off using the wire lead I actually prefer to have the ailerons on separate channels but uh, I'll start with the wire lead and the ailerons on one channel then you fit the other wing on to the spar connect up the uh, aileron connection and sort of wiggle the, pull the wire through from the front as you're wiggling the, the wing in so it doesn't get jammed in there and it all fits together rather nicely and those little plastic uh, wing retaining clips hold it in very securely you just have to make sure they've actually clicked in and engaged now a couple of dobs of hot glue to hold our pilot in place he looks rather happy and a few dobs around the outside to hold the canopy on as well now I'm connecting up a servo tester just to make sure that all my control surfaces are centered and working okay and I found the aileron was sitting up a bit so I just had to uh, adjust that little linkage adjuster now we're ready to connect up the receiver and bring the plane to life First I need to check that the direction of travel is correct and the ailerons are actually reversed so I have to go into the programming and fix that. Elevator is okay, rudder is okay. I'll just go and change that uh, aileron direction. That's working correctly now. And foolishly I decided to check the motor <laughs> without holding the plane. Don't do that. <laughs> now I've connected up a watt meter and I'm going to check the maximum current draw at full throttle and that's about 15 or 16 amps now I'm going to calibrate the ESC so we start with the transmitter throttle lever in maximum plug in the battery the ESC will give two beeps put the throttle down to minimum you'll get three beeps and then one more and you're right to go and now the ESC understands the throttle range that the transmitter is providing my receiver fits in nicely just down beside the servos there and I'll have to route the aerial somewhere battery goes, uh, that's a 22 milliamp hour battery goes right up in the nose pop the pilot in place and now we would need to mark uh, where the CG should be and the manual says 50 to 55 millimeters back from the leading edge I think it's a bit ambiguous in the manual but that's what I'll start with just put a mark at the 55 millimeter point I also like to put a little dob of hot glue so you can feel it with your fingers without having to look. And you move the battery around until the plane balances at that point. Now these Clevis connectors can come disconnected so um, I'm using little zip ties to secure them. I can slide that little zip tie back to make adjustments if I need to. Same on the rudder. Really don't want them coming undone and just making sure all the screws and grub screws are tightened up don't want those things falling off and I usually don't worry about decals but this plane comes with lots of funky little decals so I decided to put them all on these ones go under the wing tips which is a nice touch on the tail and that's all done and that is a good looking plane and the safety officer Stormy the Cat gives it a final check over and he approves